The Royal Navy has always lived and died by its surface combatants. From the battleships of the First World War to the carriers and destroyers of the Cold War, Britain's global posture has relied on maintaining credible sea power. Today, as the Type 45 destroyers approach the midpoint of their careers, the United Kingdom is already looking ahead to their successor, the Type 83, envisioned as the cornerstone of the Royal Navy's future air dominance system. The story of the Type 83 is not just about replacing an aging class of ships. It is about preparing for an entirely new generation of threats, ranging from hypersonic missiles to swarms of drones and the demands of great power competition. The Indo-Pacific and Euro-Atlantic theaters are both becoming more dangerous. China's People's Liberation Army Navy has introduced the massive Type 055 cruisers and is deploying dozens of Type 052D destroyers equipped with advanced long-range missiles. Russia continues to test NATO with new missile systems and long-range aviation. Meanwhile, the United States is pressing forward with its DDG-X program to succeed the Arleigh Burke, and Japan is fielding Maya-class destroyers with ballistic missile defense capability. Against this backdrop, the UK's six Type 45 destroyers remain powerful but limited. They are highly capable in air defense, but they have struggled with reliability due to propulsion issues and have a small fleet size. They were designed in the late 1990s, before the widespread adoption of hypersonic glide vehicles, drone swarms, or directed energy weapons. By the late 2030s, they will no longer be sufficient to guarantee air dominance at sea. Thus, the need for the Type 83 is urgent and strategic to ensure that the Royal Navy can defend carrier groups, task forces, and critical sea lanes into the middle of the 21st century. The Type 83 is currently less a ship and more a concept. Official references describe it as part of a system of systems integrating sensors, weapons, and networks across multiple domains. Rather than a single class designed around one mission, it will be the nucleus of a distributed air defense architecture. Early indications suggest it will be larger than the 8,500-ton Type 45, possibly displacing 10,000 to 12,000 tons. This would give the ship both the space and the electrical generation capacity to host next-generation systems such as high-energy lasers or electromagnetic railguns. Where the Type 45 was essentially an air defense destroyer with limited strike capability, the Type 83 is envisioned as a multi-role platform. It will provide not only layered air defense, but also ballistic missile defense, integration with space-based sensors, and command and control for allied forces. It will be the Royal Navy's answer to the era of network-centric warfare. The Type 83 will likely employ the next generation of the Aster missile family, such as the Aster 30 Block 1NT, which is designed to counter ballistic missiles. This would give the Royal Navy a sea-based ballistic missile defense role, aligning it with NATO's wider plans. It could also carry a new joint Franco-British cruise missile under the Future Cruise Anti-Ship Weapon Program, extending its land attack and anti-ship strike range. Perhaps most revolutionary is the planned integration of directed energy weapons. Britain's Dragonfire laser, already scheduled for testing on Type 45 destroyers later this decade, could be scaled up for Type 83. A laser system would allow the ship to defeat cheap drones, rockets, and swarming threats without expending expensive missiles. 
Other forms of directed energy, such as high-power microwaves, could also be developed to disrupt electronics. In terms of sensors, the Type 83 is expected to employ an advanced AESA radar suite with significantly greater range and tracking capacity than Samson. Combined with electronic warfare systems and networked data from satellites, UAVs, and other ships, the Type 83 would act as a battle management node, not just a shooter, but the command hub of a task force. Finally, the design is likely to include facilities for uncrewed systems. Dedicated hangars and launch bays for UAVs and UUVs would extend the ship's reach in surveillance and anti-submarine warfare. In short, Type 83 is envisioned as a destroyer that is as much about networks and integration as it is about raw firepower. To understand the ambition of Type 83, it is useful to compare it with peers. The U.S. Navy's planned DDGX will feature an integrated power system and capacity for lasers with displacement around 13,500 tons. China's Type 055 cruiser is already at 12,000 tons, carrying 112 vertical launch cells and a large phased array radar. Japan's Maya class though smaller, has advanced ballistic missile defense systems integrated with Aegis. In this company, Type 83 will not be about sheer numbers. The Royal Navy cannot field dozens of such ships. Instead, it will seek niche superiority, an edge in radar performance, integration with NATO and AUKUS networks, and access to advanced directed energy weapons. If successful, it would allow a small number of Type 83 destroyers to exert disproportionate influence in coalition operations. The path to Type 83 is not without obstacles. Britain faces a crowded defense procurement agenda, the SSN AUKUS submarines, the Tempest, or GSAP future combat aircraft, and modernization of the Army all compete for funding. The Ministry of Defense has a poor track record of delivering complex naval projects on time and on budget. The Type 45 itself was notorious for propulsion issues and cost overruns. There is a risk that Type 83 could suffer similar delays, undermining its credibility. Moreover, the technology underpinning directed energy weapons remains immature. While Dragonfire has shown promise in tests, scaling it for operational use at sea will require breakthroughs in power generation, cooling, and beam control. There is also the question of industrial capacity. The UK shipbuilding sector will need sustained investment to deliver large and complex destroyers alongside other programs. If the Type 83 succeeds, its implications will be far-reaching. For the UK itself, it would guarantee the Royal Navy's ability to escort its aircraft carriers and protect maritime trade routes. For NATO, it could add a critical layer of ballistic missile defense at sea. For AUKUS, the Type 83 could deploy east of Suez integrating with Australian and American forces in the Indo-Pacific. Basing in Australia or Singapore would allow the Royal Navy to project power far from home with a credible air defense capability. Just as the Type 45 symbolized Britain's commitment to global deployments in the early 21st century, the Type 83 could become the symbol of Britain's enduring role in great power competition in the mid-21st century. It would be a statement that, even with limited numbers, the UK intends to remain a first-rank naval power. The Royal Navy's Type 83 is more than a ship in the design stage. It represents a vision of the future of naval warfare, one in which lasers, advanced sensors, and networked operations 
helps define air dominance at sea. It is an ambitious project that seeks to leapfrog the limitations of the Type 45 and place Britain at the cutting edge of maritime defense technology. The road ahead will be difficult, marked by budgetary constraints, technological risks, and industrial challenges. But if it succeeds, the Type 83 will allow the Royal Navy to stand shoulder to shoulder with the U.S. Navy and to play a leading role in NATO and AUKUS operations. For Britain, this is not just about replacing a destroyer. It is about securing its place as a global naval power in the age of hypersonics and drones.